emails this morning. Don't forget Sunday mornings meets Bible study at 945, Monday nights, women's Bible study at 6 o'clock. Wednesday night, uh, this past Wednesday night, Brother West of Sheffield preached for us. It's fantastic. Tell him done a great job. Great job. And this Wednesday night, Brother Daniel Johnson is going to be speaking for us. So don't forget that. Be here Wednesday night at 6 30 on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock. There's college age or whoever wants to come on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock. Bible study. So a lot going on. And I want to make an announcement this morning uh, on Saturday, uh, May, that's this coming Saturday, May the 3rd. Alyssa is getting married and we're doing a household share for her. Alyssa, will you stay in this morning? Everybody in the field. And we're having a household chair and it'll be over at my house and, and on the outside there. If it's raining, we'll come over here to the church. So don't forget that. It's at 2 o'clock this coming Saturday at 2 o'clock. So uh, don't forget that. Let's worship as our brothers come to take our tithes and offerings as well. Let's worship as our David, we announce it. The National Day of Prayer Service for the City of Cumberland will be held on Thursday outside of City Hall at 7 o'clock. I'd like to ask for each and every one of you all that to do it. We're actually going to have to have drama practice uh, today. Even though we're not going to have you, we're going to have drama practice today at 4 30. Those of you who are in the presence of the Lord is here. Drama, that's all we're going to be doing for that thing on Thursday. So make sure that you're here at 4 30. And also go to youth service for junior youth this evening, so don't forget that. Let's all just pray together this morning. It's going to be great to pray for each other's needs. You know, the Bible tells us to pray you one for another. Go ahead, you may be with you. Pray with Heavenly Father, we just come before you right now, Lord. And God, I lift up before you, Lord, my brothers and sisters, those that have needs, Father. God, we know that you want to meet those needs, Father. Those that are sick, that you would just heal them, Lord. You just buy them and love them. You can them, Father. Those that have other needs, Lord, you just meet those needs, Father. God, we just invite your Spirit, the Holy Spirit, into this service today. Father, just anoint each and every part of the service, Father. You've already anointed singing, Father. Anoint the preaching, Father. Testimonies, whatever you may come for today, Father. Bless each and every one. Father, we ask you to bless this offering about to receive. Bless those who give richly. Bless those who don't have to give, Father. We just give you our praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
been there for me over 47 years. Actually, he's been there 65 years. Yeah. The first 25 of them, I just didn't acknowledge him. And I'm so glad I him. He's the most, most important thing in my life. I tell you what, for him, I already did. Out in hell. And I think about it, and I never forget about where he's brought me from. Yeah. And I love him, and this song's my testimony. This way.
let's stand. Y'all being real quiet today. Father, we praise you for today. Thank you, God, that we want to desire a heart after you to realize when we go through every storm, every problem, to realize, God, we're just holding on and you're going to bring us through. We praise you for all the promises. We thank you for your word today. And I pray, God, that the great times that you will anoint him mightily, anoint us to hear your word, God. Don't let it fall on fallow ground. God, let it bring forth the fruit for your kingdom that as we go outside this place today, others will see the difference and the change that you've made in our lives. In Jesus Christ's name. Everybody say it. Let's give great hope Our prayers today. Before I even start talking, turn to the book of Jonah. And I'm going to say this in a, in a way that if you don't know where the book of Jonah book is, I had trouble finding it myself. So if you don't know, get somebody to help you because it's important that you see what I'm going to say. What the Lord will say, and that's what I pray is, Lord, I don't want to talk, I want you to talk. I want a complete anointing that I can say with clarity what you've given me. You know, it's springtime, and uh, we all know what time it is, and we all know what we do at that time of the year. I don't want you to heal me. 
so I can preach His Word. And as I go back and I say, just why am I hurting me right? Just why is things aching? Why can't I sleep? Why can't I eat? To give you a safety lesson, Brandon, you've got to ask five, ask why five times before you get at the true root cause of what's happening. Jonah ends up doing what God tells him to do. But because of bad choices that are made, the devil has wrote a couple of chapters in my life. See, Jonah could just win. Look what chapter 3, verse 1 says. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time. Yeah. Arise and go to Nineveh. Yeah. And he arose and went. That should have been the first two verses of the first chapter. And I'm preaching to you today a sermon that I don't even want to preach because I love you and I wish that somebody had preached this sermon to me when I still had blonde hair because I made bad decisions then that I'm still paying for even though I've got gray hair. Come on, Come on. 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 And the whale spits him out. And he goes to Nineveh with the inside of a whale hanging from him. If you can see my spirit, I'm fine. I'm all right. I'm healthy. I don't have to take no pills of no kind. I'm blessed. But if you could see my inside, you would see a man that's preaching with the guts of a bad decision hanging from my spirit. And it don't have to be like that. I'm preaching to a bunch of people that ain't messed up it don't have to be like that. You don't have to mess up, Brandon. You don't have to mess up, Brian. You don't have to mess up, Ethan. You don't have to mess up. None of you have to mess up. It don't have to be like that. You don't have to mess up. So I'm preaching to you out of love because I could have been doing this for 38 years, Bill. When I was 17 years old, I used to wait till everybody went to sleep for me. And I would sneak in there and I'd get my Bible out. And I'd read and I'd worry and I'd study and I'd read and I'd pray and I'd study. I love God. I love God. You don't have to mess up, young people, is what I'm trying to tell you. You don't have to mess up. And the message is so much. I thought four young people that I thought that they asked Eric just to do it on a youth night. But no, us middle-aged people, I don't guess I'm even middle-aged no more, but us middle-aged people, we don't have to mess up neither. And us old people, we don't have to mess up neither. You see, I'm glad that the Bible says God told Jonah the second time. How many glad for the second time? Yeah. Man, I'm really just messed up.
get a second chance. I'm missing, I'm preaching. If you don't mess up the first time, you don't have to ask for a second chance. If you 
Mind you, a hoagie wouldn't be a weird word that you call face. <laughs> Cast a hook, and the Lord's going to hook you up with your provision, with your mate, with your friends, with your professional. What is that big word? I don't know that big word. I'm not saying that. <laughs> with your professional associates, cast a hook, but don't bait it. Every girlfriend that I've had to get, that I've had to impress, let me tell you something, impression will lead to depression. Because you fall in love with what you're impressed by. But then when you find out that it really ain't the way it is, See, most bait that we use is artificial. Artificial. I said it's artificial. So anytime I've had to be artificial, would you like to accompany me to the movies? <laughs> I, will, I will come. I will arrive at your house at about seven thirty. <laughs> And you go down the road. Any way you can remember, it's all right for me. That's why I bring this stuff up here. Any way you can remember, any time you got to be artificial in your professional actions, at church, in your dating, who you marry, who you hang around with, your friends, any time you got to be something that you're not. And how many times? And I ride down the road, and before I get the tots, it's like, oh my good gracious, what have I done? Dude. What it's supposed to be? That's when you cut the line. That's when you cut the line. I went fishing with uh, Pam and Missy's dad a long time ago. I'll never forget that day. The Lord gave me a gift with my dad and my good friend Gordy. We went fishing. We went down to Cherokee Lake and we're fishing for rock bass. And we get out there and I just have a good time just being back and all. And all of a sudden I catch a fish about that big. About that big, Brandon. I'm really there, man. I'm, I get it on the boat. It's that big. I promise you it's about that. It was growing over the years. <laughs> but anyway, it's pretty big. And, and Dory says, throw it back. His boat, his car, up and down here, stay in his house. He says, throw it back. It looked good to me. It looked, why? Throw it back. Yeah. Well, about an hour later, he catches one, which probably has grown over the years, too. But it was about that big. And he fights for about 10 minutes with it. He finally gets it up. And he could see my disappointment, so we thought that he needed, and he didn't need, to tell me why I had to throw mine back. Because I think he looked good on my wall. You know, I'm proud. That's what I ever thought. So he gets over there, and he's cleaning the fish. He's cleaning his big fish that he caught. And he said, Rick, come over here. I want to show you something. And as he's cleaning that fish, there is a very small piece of meat that of meat that you can't eat in it. And he cuts that meat out of his big fish. He puts it to the side. He said, on the fish that you caught, there was so much bad stuff in it 
that it wasn't worth keeping after you cut the bad stuff out. <laughs> Some of you are in a relationship with somebody that's got too much bad stuff in them. God said to cut the line. But he said, the best thing to do with that, so let it go and let it grow. And the more it grows, the more good stuff goes in. It's just like being a Christian. The more we grow, the more good stuff gets in us. The more bad stuff goes out of us. The more we read, David. The more we pray, David. The more good stuff goes in. The more bad stuff goes out. Back to why I'm hurting, I missed this. If you ask Jonah why you have the inward parts of a fish while you're preaching at Nineveh, you got to ask why at least four or five times you get to the, to the uh, root cause, they say. Jonah, why are you fishing with fish guns all over you? It's say because a fish swallowed you. Why did a fish swallow you? Because I got thrown overboard of a ship. Why did you get thrown overboard of a ship? Because I caught everybody on that ship trouble and they threw me over. Why did you call everybody on that ship trouble? Because I disobeyed God and went to Tarshish instead of them. Why did you disobey God and go to Tarshish instead of them? This is the root cause. Because I'm stupid. <laughs> and I wasn't going to use the word stupid. I was going to use unwise. Because... Ephesians 5, 17 says, Be not unwise, but know what the will of the Lord is. Be not unwise in who you date. Be not unwise in who you associate with. Be not unwise in who you have friendship with. Be not unwise in your professional relationship. Be not unwise, but knowing what the will of the Lord is. So I clicked on unwise to see what it means in the Greek. And you know what it means? Stupid. <laughs> Not considering the possible consequences. That's pretty stupid. <laughs> so then why am I hurting? And I got to go back. I did this. I did that. Uh, this happened. And that happened. What did that happen? Went back to the five whys. Get to the root cause. I'm stupid. <coughs> and I made some bone-headed decisions that I don't want you to make. Because if you get hooked up with somebody, if you get hooked up with some job, if you get hooked up with some relationship that you had to bait your hook to get, it wasn't God that hooked you up. It will literally run your life. Thank God for second chances. Thank God for that. And I am very happy. I'm happier than I've ever been. But I got fish guts in my spirit. Come on. And I'm preaching to you. And I should have been doing this years ago. I should have accomplished the whole lot. But because of a bad decision. And ain't it funny how we do it to ourselves. I had the ability to change my decision, Shelby. But I didn't do it because I was stupid. Come on. Come on. Why do we got to wait our hook?
They are the laziest, the ugliest, the most good for nothing fish that they are. And I want to tell you something. Don't fall for other people's bait. Don't be a sucker to what they appear to be. Oh, that fish that Gordy made me let go. It looked good to me. It looked beautiful to me. But inside, inside there was so much bad stuff that it wasn't worth keeping. Kenny Rogers more or less got it right when he said the secret of survival was knowing what to throw away and knowing what to keep. Are you in a relationship that God has brought you here this morning because He has mercy and He knows the consequences of your relationship and He knows what's down the road and He knows what He could have saved Rick Cole from if I wouldn't have made a bad decision and He knows what I could have kept me from and He wants to keep you from doing the same thing. Are you here today so you can hear this word because God says cut the line. To somebody that's being phony and you fall in love with the them they that you see. Not with the them that is the real them, the inside of the fish that ain't worth keeping. It is not try to you buy it. It is you better pray. And you better pray some more. And then when you think you prayed enough, you better pray some more. You better pray about friends. You better pray about dating relationships. You better pray about jobs. You better pray until you pray some more. And then you better keep on praying because you get hooked up with the wrong one. And it'll follow you from blonde hair to gray hair to no hair. And it'll still affect your life. It'll still affect your life. You pray about it. God loves you so much. You pray about it. God, did you hook me up? Or am I just in love with an ideal? Am I in love with what the person that baited the hook with? And not with the person. Ask yourself. There's a lot of pretty girls in here. Not that I look at them. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with being good looking is people will fall in love with you because of what you look like. And they will not fall in love with the truth of you. So you ask yourself if that big, strong, handsome punk you're in love with, what if you had a car wreck and all of a sudden your nose was three, three inches off center and your mouth was up here? Would he feed you with a spoon for six months while he's in the hospital? Or would he have some other good looking thing riding around in that car with him? It's time we ask ourselves good, it's time we ask ourselves questions like that. Because you know what the divorce rate is? 62%. You know what it is in the church? 62%. You got hooked up with an ideal. You got hooked up with a dream. You got hooked up with something artificial. I know I have been there. Don't have to be that way, Brandon. Don't have to be that way. You don't have to think so. Tell me you don't have to be that way. You pray about everything. Let me tell you something. 
professional people. Now, back on the days that I have never done this, but getting somebody up here, and the Lord finally showed me which one to get up here for two reasons. Oh, my, I hope y'all don't throw nothing at me after this one. You see, young people, this is what I say. If you're hooked up with somebody, you need to cut the line. Ask God if you need to cut the line. Then cut the line. Here's for professional people. Rhonda, come here. If you don't care, boy, that was mean, wasn't it? Rhonda, come here. Man. I have faith on that look. Miss Creech, come here. Uh, I will be working with you in the next semester. And I've heard so much about you. And I am so looking forward to working with you and find your technique of value to these college guys. <laughs> there was nothing wrong with that, was there? Nothing wrong with that. Oh my, I'm scared. Nothing wrong with that, was it, Dave? She had probably come home and say, Oh, I met this delightful guy at work. <laughs> And he's going to be working with me, David. You know, Miss Creech, I am so blessed to be part of your establishment. Part of your <laughs> Here's what's really going on. Sometime. Here's what's really happening that we don't see. Because I baited my hook. Okay? And the devil bait a hook. The devil can appear as an angel. The devil can bait his hook. Here's what's really going on. Or possibly really going on. Uh, Satan has seen that your family has uh, got anointed here lately. And that your husband is especially anointed. And that your, and he has great plans for David. And he has great plans for him. I am sent by the devil to slowly win your friendship to where you can't tell that I'm not being professional. And I'm going to do it in such a subtitle manner. And it's going to take me several years to do it. I mean, we'll have several lunches and we will talk professionally, of course. And then, what I'm really saying and what my intent really is, is to break up your family. And to break them into sin, you and your husband in separate directions, therefore sending the kid to the and this kid to that. And I'm going to do it so subtly and so trickfully and so deceiving that you're not even going to know it's been done until it's been done. And God said to tell you that what I said is true. And every bit of your family is blessed. Not the story about the Every bit of it is blessed. And the, and the devil is going to give you guys such way of discerning that you're going to see this coming a mile away. You're going to see this coming a mile away. You're going to see that coming a mile away. You're going to see that coming a mile away. You're going to say that's a subtle. That's a fake. That's a folly. And your children are protected from suckers and from folly. Let me tell you something. Let me kick in the marriage counselor. 
just for a little bit. Don't you leave that house with nothing. You get everything you need from your mates. You get friendship from your mates. You get, you get, well, I don't say that word. You get everything you need from your mates. And when you leave that house, you don't need nothing from somebody else because you got your best friend. You got your lover. You got the one good Lord. And you don't need nothing from nobody else. You don't need to talk to nobody else. I'm not talking about you. He's a witness and you can be alive and understand that. But you don't need to have no other relationship. Your husband and your wife fulfills all your needs. Sexually, spiritually, financially, whatever the need may be. And you don't need nothing that the devil will wait for you to try to get you to catch. The family is too important. The family is too important. Don't click on that junk on TV. On that junk on the computer. The family is too important. Get, get in your spirit. Just stay in your spirit. And that phone will make a bad decision. And it don't have to be like that. Oh, God. I have to turn my head so much. I'll turn my head sometimes when I don't have to. I mean, it's hard to drive through town at this time of year. It's like, Lord, I don't want to hear her, but I don't want to look at her either.
Or you are here. And so I think we're here today. And you don't know Jesus. And let me tell you something. How do I say this? The fact that you don't know him. See, I had a, had a prison ministry for a short time, and this murderer, he told me, he said, every minute of every day, every day of every week, I sit in my cell, and from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, I ask myself, why did I do that? Why did I do that? See, the devil might have wrote some chapters in your life. The devil may be right now writing chapters in your life that was never supposed to be there. I've been there. But you know what you can do? Today, if you give that pen, I ain't saying it won't be tough times, but let him write the rest of your life. Let him be, the Bible says, he's the author and the finisher. Let him write the rest of your life. Let him write the rest of your life. God's called. 
love on somebody. You don't say, I've got a hook up for you. I know you messed up the first time. I know you messed up the second time. Some of us have messed up, I don't know how many times, but God said, I'm calling you. Call me again. Call me again. Calling you into a relationship with me.
Melissa, you want to say something? Amen. Amen. 